I am going to hand it over to Paul, who works with Helena um, Agra Enterprises. He specializes in ag production, viticulture, and business since 1999. He's a local Cal Poly graduate, as well as a longtime supporter of our organization. I think he's been on the board maybe twice now, <laughs> and really just a, a wonderful person to work with. Today, he's going to be talking to us about the differences between organics, sustainable, and biodynamics, and he's also an expert in integrated pest management. So feel free to ask Paul as many questions as you like. He is just an incredible resource for this. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot the screen over to you so you can take it over. So like Beth said, um, today uh, I'm gonna be talking about um, sustainable, organic, and biodynamic farming systems um, and really explaining hopefully um, you know what what the difference is um, and this is going to be I would say a 30,000 foot view I'm not going to try and get too too technical on the details of you know organic fertilizer production and and um, you know and systems like that but we're going to go through and really explain kind of some of the key differences between that. Um, and then we're gonna talk about integrated pest management. I think this is gonna be a, um, a theme that you will see across all, um, all of these farming systems. Um, and I think it's really, really important to talk about and to understand um, because that's, that's a topic that uh, a lot of people are very concerned about, a lot of consumers are. So um, anyways, let's get started. This is, um, this, oh, this is a, um, hey Beth, I think, can you mute Beth? Um, thanks. Um, so anyway, you saw this, you saw this chart, um, this summary program chart that, uh, that the Vineyard team had, had, has put together and Beth did a really good, um, really good, um, Kind of introduction to that in talking about the um, the two or the three different systems and we're, we're really looking at farming practices um, with organic and biodynamics and so um, as you can see SIP does um, and certifies more than than just the on-farm system um, you know it, it certifies water conservation energy conversation um, conservation, um, air quality, and, uh, and the like. So I'm gonna put a pointer on here. All right, so sustainable farming. Really sustainable SIP and especially SIP certified sustainable farms can be both organic or biodynamic. We have a number of um, sustainable um, farms, SIP certified, um, vineyards that are certified organic or are certified biodynamic. Um, a little aside, I, I was a, a vineyard manager for a number of years. Um, I managed both organic and um, sustainable um, vineyards here on the on the Central Coast. Um, and then I've been I've been a consultant for 20 years as well um, in vineyards. And so I've gotten to work with um, all three of these different systems, um, actually all four, if you want to consider non-sustainable certified, quote unquote, conventional farming as well. Um, I, I work with um, today, um, all, all basically all four of those, those systems, writing fertility plans and, and the like. And really, when you think about sustainability, it's, it's something that's, that's greater than just the farming system. Um, and so looking at certification, Specifically, there's organic and there's then um, Demeter, um, which is certified biodynamic. That's the certifier for biodynamics. So as I mentioned, certified farming um, or vineyard can be organic or biodynamic, but not all organic or biodynamic farms can be SIP sustainable. So really looking at organic farming, um, Let's look at basically all, you know, all three of those here. So organic farming, what's the definition of organic farming or certified organic farming? Well, organic is a system or a farming system and certification that is 
um, administered by the USDA, the United the US Department of, of Agriculture. And so it is being a government agency has some very specific um, specific definitions. And it, the definition right off of their fact sheet um, in what an organic farm, an organic system is, it's the application of a set of cultural, biological, and mechanical practices that support the cycling of these on-farm resources, promoting ecological balance and conserving biodiversity. Well, what, what does that mean? Um, and again, being a, a certification from the government, um, they kind of break things down to the least common denominator. And so what we're really talking about is we're talking about a, a farming focused system. Um, this system, an organic, certified organic vineyard or farm, um, that certification is based specifically on the farming practices that are going on to that, you know, into that ground. So what are those practices? Um, well, there's a number of different practices. We have integrated pest management. Remember I mentioned, I mentioned that point, um, that topic earlier. We're going to get do a little bit of a deeper dive into explaining what integrated pest management is. Um, but to keep things simple, um, there are um, organic farmers are allowed to use um, organic pesticides. Um, so that's one of the tools that they're able to use in order to control um, to control insects um, and diseases on their on their property. There are um, pesticides that are certified organic. They're derived from natural sources. Um, the same thing with fertilizer. Fertilizer um, needs to be organically sourced. What does organically sourced mean? That could be a very broad definition. Typically, that is, um, you know, fertilizers derived from um, natural sources. So um, we, in the, in the industry, we use a lot of soybean, um, meal, so plant-derived um, nutritional sources, so, you know, compost, um, fish, um, you know, fish meal, um, fish emulsion. We use different, there's algaes out there. There's a lot of anything really that is, that is, you know, natural, that is not synthetically produced, you know, produced from oil or, or, or any other, um, you know, in a lab. From, from chemicals and things like that. That's kind of what fits into those, um, or quote unquote, organic sources, organic products. The other thing that, that uh, organics really look at is, is certainly water quality. They don't certify for water quality, um, but water quality is a very important piece um, of organic farming because we need to take into consideration all of the inputs. If you notice, um, you know, these, these practices um, of on-farm resources. Well, water is an on-farm resource. It's probably one of the, it is, not probably, it is the most important resource of, of any farming system is water. Um, whether it is rainwater or groundwater or the like, water management is really, really important in organic farming. So conserving um, water as well as maximizing the water quality um, is a key point in organic systems. Cover crops. Um, organics use a lot of cover crops. And what are cover crops? Again, Beth mentioned cover crops. Those are, are other crops or other plants that we would plant in, in between the rows or allow to grow um, in the system that, that give us a number of different benefits, both um, for cycling nutrients back into the soil um, adding organic matter to the soil. So um, organic growers, farmers will, will grow a, a crop of beans and peas in between the vine rows and then we'll, we'll disc those in or we'll incorporate those into the soil um, to add basically what's called green manure um, or organic matter back into the soil. Um, we'll use cover crops for erosion control as well. Um, so any, you know, vineyards or operations that are on slopes, we plant cover crops in the winter to, to reduce erosion um, and the like. So cover crops are really, really important. Um, and the cover crops need to be certified organic as well. So they can't have any, any uh, kinds of coatings or, or any kinds of additives to them that, that are synthetic. But probably the most, one of the more important things in organic farming 
is um, is uh, cover crops or I'm sorry, cultural practices. And and you'll see this across almost all all farming systems, but cultural practices, especially in vineyards, um, play a, a very important um, important part of not only pest management but also you know growing that um, that the vine growing the crop um, so the things that we do as far as leaf pulling and shoot removal and fruit dropping fruit to bring those vines into balance um, are certainly part of an organic farming system tillage as well so tillage is um, basically disking or um, manipulating the soil um, in such a way with you know with with implements um, to accomplish what we need to accomplish so um, as you can imagine um, in organic farming um, a lot of there's a lot of tractor work involved in organic farming because there has to be a lot of passes through to to spray um, you know organic pesticides um, you know powdery mildew is a really big issue for us in wine grapes um, and you know organic materials um, that control powdery mildew usually only last about five to seven days so traveling you know driving as you can imagine driving a tractor through a field you can get a lot of soil compaction where the tractor drives over and over and over again down the roads that's not a great thing so we need to break that soil up open the soil up a little bit um, you know, to encourage water penetration and, and, and incorporation of nutrients and things like that. So tillage is definitely a part of organic farming. Um, and then obviously a certification and an audit is required in order to be um, considered organic, certified organic. And there are, um, there are certifying organizations out there, um, CCOF, which is cert, uh, California Certified Organic Farmers, um, there's a number of different third-party certification organizations that take a look at all the the, the input that that farming system is doing, um, and um, and then they they basically certify um, that yes, you are organic if you fall you know kind of fall into all those um, different categories. All right, so that's it for organic farming. Um, now biodynamic. Um, biodynamics certainly has a um, an interesting uh, sometime interesting take and reputation in the agricultural industry um, but I, I, I certainly work with biodynamic um, farmers as well um, there are a number of, of very um, successful and um, very um, yeah very successful biodynamic farms out there what is a biodynamic farm or is a biodynamic vineyard so biodynamic um, it's an ecological farming system so again think of remember farming system here that views the farm as the self-contained and self-sustaining organism um, biodynamic fertilizers um, avoid all synthetic chemical pesticides fertilizers and transgenic contamination so again this certification is farming focused so just like organic it is a it is a farming focused system um, now it's definitely a lot different because this is um, I would say biodynamics are very um, very close to a I would say again a self-contained self-sustaining system so um, they're again focused on practices um, so practices such as soil conservation um, again, cover crops is a huge component in biodynamics. Um, crop rotation, so using cover crops in between the vines, different cover crops at different times of the year to achieve different um, different goals. So again, if you you remember, or using different cover crops in different rows. So you might have um, one row that has um, legumes in it, and then the row next to it has um, an insectiflora mix. So um, basically a mix of, of flowers to help attract beneficial insects um, to help with pest management. Um, the use of compost to add and cycle nutrients into the soil. Um, they don't really use um, fertilizers um, per se um, or, or pesticides. Um, however, there are, if you look at the, 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 
one of the pieces is application of preparation. There is a whole, they have a whole system of um, on-farm produced, they call them preparations, but they have um, their different um, plant extracts and things like that, um, different kind of, I would say teas, um, compost teas and, and regular um, teas that are derived from a number of on-farm grown plants, specific plants that have pesticidal property. And when we talk about um, integrated pest management a little bit later, we're, we're, hopefully I can define what a pesticide is um, for you because a pesticide doesn't necessarily have to be, a, you know, some kind of crazy harsh chemical. It can be um, other things. So um, biodynamics, again, is really focused around this kind of self-contained, self-sustaining system. So no input, you know, no bringing nothing in and really minimizing what you remove. Um, and there are a number of biodynamic farms that are very, very successful. Um, up in Glen Ellen, Benziger Family Farming, um, they're fantastic. Uh, they have an amazing biodynamic farm up there. Um, you know, very, very close system. They have um, animals. They have, um, you know, a, a lot of different um, wildlife, you know, areas. They have um, almost gardens in between the vines. Um, growing a whole number of different things. So it's, it's really, really beautiful. Um, and uh, they do, you know, they do a, a great job and they make really good wine. Um, but again, that, that's, that is that farming system, um, system approach. Now, if we look at, you know, we've looked at organic farming focus, we've looked at biodynamics. Let's look at SIP sustainable. Now, remember, I mentioned biodynamic and organic can be SIP certified. Um, however, not all SIP certified vineyards can be organic or biodynamic. Why is that? Well, um, because the SIP sustainable system takes this not only a whole farming and business approach. So we're not just looking at the farming system, but we're looking at the entire business. We're looking at the entire um, kind of supply chain. We're looking at the entire part of not just growing the grapes, not just how we grow the grapes, but also the environmental stewardship, the things that we're doing um, for the environment, equitable treatment of employees, and business sustainability. Because remember, at the, at the end of the day, when you think about um, you know, farming, especially farming in California, it is, it is a business. Um, we we have to be able to you know operations are you know we're we're growing to sell a product to consumers and if the system that we're using is not doesn't make business sense if it loses money every year um, and eventually that business goes away and that farm goes away um, that's not sustainable the idea behind sustainable and certified sustainable for vineyards is that we're creating a model a system that allows not only that vineyard to to continue to operate but also the people working there um, at the vineyard as well as providing um, you know materials and products um, to consumers at a, you know at a, at a sustainable you know cost so looking at farming practices obviously that is a big part of um, what sustainable, SIP sustainable um, farming is, just like with the other, the other practices. Um, a big key um, in farming and using in SIP certified um, vineyards is integrated pest management. And the, the allowed, um, there is a, in a list of allowed materials and, or I would say there's a list of disallowed materials. Um, SIP allows only the use of what are called reduced risk pesticides, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but really, that's that's a key. So it would be you know not just organics, but it allows the use of other materials to control um, disease, insects, and the like. Um, and especially in in the world that we live in today, with travel and 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 the like we're dealing with a lot of invasive species from other um you know from other parts of the world um you know vine mealybug um, glassy wing sharpshooter um now the spotted lantern fly is a is something that we're dealing with 
those have all come from outside of California and outside the United States in some cases. So now we're we're dealing with things that have no natural enemies and the like. So we're having to use, you know, we're having to have the ability um, to control those, um, you know, to control those invasive species and to control those pests in in a way that um, again allows us to use reduced risk materials, but at the same time we can use them and we're not restricted um, and potentially lose, you know, can lose an entire vineyard because of um, an invasive species. So we'll talk about integrated pest management a little bit later. Fertility. Fertility has a huge piece um, in sustainable, um, SIP certified sustainable. Um, that's one of the things that uh, it's one of my areas of expertise is, is um, you know, fertility management and, and fertility for, um, you know, especially in vines. Um, and a lot of what I do in November and December um, is write fertility programs for um, for vineyards, and and really, it's the idea behind it is to provide the minimal amount of inputs from fertilizers to get the maximum amount of crop. So remember, we're dealing again with a business, and vineyards and vineyard owners. Growers aren't going to want to spend money on fertilizer and inputs that they don't need to because that that is you know if they're spending money on something they don't need to that's that's a waste that's a wasted investment that's money that can't go into paying for another employee or allowing the the operation to to continue to operate so the fertility plans that I do I call them minimum fertility plans um, is where we really look at maximizing every single input um, from a fertilizer point of view that we can um, with with fertilizer um, and with fertility and that's a big part of um, big part of SIP is, is having a fertilizer management plan or program around um, minimizing the use of fertilizer um, and maximizing the the you know every pound that we use so fertility is a really big piece Irrigation and water quality. We certify, um, you know, we, we, there are a number of pieces um, or categories within SIP certified um, on irrigation. Are you, um, do you have an irrigation budget? Are you, you know, do you have an irrigation management plan? How are you maximizing um, water quality um, and, and the like? And actually, those are things that aren't certified within um, organic or biodynamic because um, you know having a an irrigation management plan is, is not on on the list for organic or, or biodynamic but it is for sustainable soil conservation um, you know doing uh, you know using um, materials like filter strips and um, and the like to, to, to minimize off farm movement of soil so using cover crops below um, to help minimize erosion um, if, if we lose all of our topsoil to erosion, again, we're not going to have we're not going to have an operation. We're not going to have a vineyard. So using cover crops and um, and other plant material to um, to reduce erosion is a very big um, a big piece. Water and energy conservation. Are you again? Are you using solar power to to run your pumps? Are you using um, you know what what type of um, pumps are you using? Are you keeping those pumps maintained? Um, there's a whole level of different um, different um, basically requirements under SIP um, around energy cons conservation. Air quality um, are the tractors that you're using, um, you know, within spec as far as the requirements for um, you know air quality are um, are you using diesel um, in your irrigation versus say natural gas for um, for your pumps if they're not electrically powered things of that nature so air quality um, again has a piece continuing education so are the people who are making the decisions and are making um, you know making uh, you know recommendations on that um, on that farm professional um, in the fact that they need to get continuing education. Um, so I'm a um, agricultural pest control advisor, a, a, a license, what's called a PCA, um, by the state of California, and I need to get 
um, in order to maintain my license, um, which allows me to write recommendations for um, for pesticides in California, I need to get 40 hours of continuing education every every two years. I also I'm also a certified crop advisor, um, which is another certification. Um, I'm required to get 20 hours of education every year um, on a number of different um, topics from irrigation, air quality, pesticides, fertilizer, nutrient management, and and the like. Well, our the people um, in your operation, are they getting continuing education as well? Because a really important piece of maintaining professionalism and then also growing our industry is that, that things are changing every day. Um, and, and in order to you know, stay on top of all the latest trends and, and the latest things that are, that are happening within the technology um, of agriculture, you gotta get continuing education. So that's a really important piece. Recycling. Are you recycling your containers? Are you recycling um, if you're doing a, um, say if you're, you're pulling out a vineyard and you're doing a, you know, a replant, are you recycling the, the drip tube? Um, you know, are you, there's a lot of pounds of drip tube in a, in, a, in a vineyard acre, if you can imagine, there's a lot. Thousands and thousands of feet of irrigation tube. Um, are you recycling the steel? Um, so those are questions. And then again, in, um, on the farming practices, there is certification and a third party audit um, required to be SIP certified. I, um, I help, uh, one of the things that I do is I help um, certify, not the certifiers, but, but people who are, who are, are filling out their, their forms. I, I help uh, with, um, you know, the calculations on the, the, you know, their irrigation and the nutrient installation. Um, management because it, it's going to be audited and we have a third party auditor that comes in and, and verifies all of these different practices. And it's not just, um, you know, practices that, you know, you say, okay, you, you know, here's what we do. You actually have to prove it. You actually have to provide documentation, um, either written or, um, you know, or photograph documentation on that, um, you know, on that, the, those practices that you're doing. So it goes way above and beyond um, other other systems. So that makes it, it's kind of hard to get, but at the same time, it's it's a really, um, you know, it's very, I think it's very worthwhile and it's a great story to be able to tell because it, it isn't easy to do, um, especially, you know, in these, in these farming systems. Now, the other piece um, is looking at the business practices. So how is your, um, you know, how is your operation um, interacting with the community? Are you practicing, you know, what, what sort of social responsibility um, are you practicing in your business practices? Are you providing, um, do you provide benefits to your employees? Um, are you providing a fair, you know, and, and you know, fair wage to the, to the, to the people who are working um, on that property, to the field workers who are, who are a big part of, of the you know the group of people that, that make a you know that that make a system system work, um, and then there's also a fruit quality piece. You're documenting your fruit quality. Are you you know are you producing the highest quality um, you know crops? So those those types of, of business practices go above and beyond the farming practice approach that a um, that a you know a certified organic or a biodynamic, biodynamic system um, would provide. Now I'm of course not saying that um, certified organic vineyards and cert and biodynamic vineyards aren't doing a lot of these other things. Um, I know several of them who are you know who are doing a lot of these things, but SIP is basically that third party certification saying that yes you, you know, you definitely are, and it's a way to give confidence to, um, to both you as the people working, you know, working for those operations, as well as the consumers that, you know, those things, you know, we're not just saying it, we're proving it, you know? So I think that's, that's the big difference there between, I would say, SIP certified sustainable farming operations and, um, and, uh, you know, organic or biodynamic. So, We've got a little bit of time. I think um, I think if if people want to um, 
add put you know put in their questions. Um, again, this was this was designed to be around a, a live um, a live audience, so it's kind of a little bit more difficult on the on the website. Um, but like Beth mentioned, if if you want to just type your questions in, um, I'll, I'll I can address those as they uh, as they come up. Um, and at the end maybe um, or if there's you know questions I can I can also address them as you know if they're pertinent um, to the to my say current slide I can I can answer those as well yeah I saw one question come through our... in our oh, chat okay. box I think we have let's see about 10 minutes before we'll roll on to the next one so one question that I see right now is what's the regulation in regard of using treated wood to oil piping for end posts? And I could be misunderstanding Ooh. that. Maybe like an oil, you mean like an oil treated end yeah. post? Is that what that means? Yeah. Well, no, oil field, um, oil field pipe versus um versus treated end posts in say um you know in for the for the vineyard operation. Um, I would say um, certified organic. I want to say they don't have um, requirements for hardware that goes into the into the system because it is, um, you know, because it's not part of the quote unquote farming operation. SIP certified allows the use of those, um, you know, especially oil field pipe because uh, it's recycled. We're actually taking something that that a waste product from you know from a, an industry and we're we're repurposing that so um you know there's there's really no regulations in organic or biodynamic around the the infrastructure um that goes into uh you know into like end posts and, and wire and drip tube and things like that yeah and just along those lines that's been a benefit that we hear from a lot of the people who've gotten certified is because we they're reviewing these standards every year. We add new questions, we're getting it peer reviewed, we're constantly updating the program, is that it can be a way to learn new research, new science, new technologies, or even just new ideas, you know, where people will be going through mm -hmm. the process of certification or even self-assessment, because you can do the program for free as a self-assessment and find out kind of like new ways or new ideas that people can um, implement a new practice, whether it be using a recycled, you know, material or a byproduct or a different, you know, way of uh, management for your team. Yep. Any other questions in here? We can pop them into the chat box. Well, I've got a couple more slides to talk about on integrated pest management. So Please. if we right. wanna hop, hop in on those, I can talk about that. Um, really quickly, because um, I think some of the biggest questions people have um, when it comes to farming um, is around pest management. So um, I'm going to go kind of quick, but we're, we're uh, hopefully we can give you some some information on IPM as we call it and how it works um, in reducing pesticide use. So you know pesticides, they're in the news. Um, you know, we, we hear about, you know, bees, we look at, you know, people are, you know, we see drift um, is an issue. Um, you know, we're worried about pesticides in schools. Um, and then, you know, we see these, we see these signs, you know, in fields and, you know, it's, you know, danger and pesticides and skull and crossbones. And that, that is really scary for a lot of people. Um, and it's scary because, there's a lot of, of, unfortunately, a lot of misinformation out there um, and a lot of a lack of knowledge surrounding pesticides and how they're, um, how they're used um, and why they're used. And so um, integrated pest management um, was designed around, oh, it came around maybe 25 years ago. Um, and this is, a, this is kind of a, a process um, it's designed to solve pest problems while reducing pesticide use, and the key is minimizing risks to people and the environment. And this is a it's a it's an ecosystem based strategy um, that we use. So, agricultural pest control advisors like myself, um, we use IPM in our every day in our um, in our pest management strategies and decision making. Um, 
and it's really designed on long-term prevention of pests and their damage. So how does that work? Well, IPM, it's really a step-by-step -step program, and it's a decision tree that we, we take, um, you know, almost every, every day. So what, a, you know, what goes into it? Well, the first part is pest identification. What is the, you know, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with powdery mildew? Or are we dealing with um, botrytis, which are two fungal diseases that grapes get, but they're two, they have two completely different um, treatment options. What's the target crop? We assess the site and the, any surrounding hazards. Is there a school right next to my vineyard? I managed a vineyard in Templeton um, that had, uh, you know, an elementary school right next door. So that came into, you know, very much was an important part of my, you know, the considerations on how and what and when when I applied um, materials to that um, to that property. We monitor and assess. Um, the pest numbers and and the damage. Um, then we make you know we we make a decision based on the control measures. So we make a control measurement and then we assess did it work? And if it worked, then we're good to go. Then we're done. If it didn't work, then we need to we need to continue on. So going through here, um, really, what we need to do when when we when we have a, a you know when we're we're integrating IPM into a system is we identify what our target crop is. What's the growth stage of that crop? What's the weather we're dealing with? Is the weather going to turn rainy or is it going to be, you know, bright and sunny outside? What are the hazards? Is there water? Um, are there houses next door? Are there schools next door? Are there other crops next door? Um, those are decisions that we need to, to make or, or, you know, pieces that we need to identify. Um, because they're going to have a big influence on, you know, how we're going to potentially control something. And then what's the pest population? We use what are called economic thresholds. Um, you know, if I go out and I see, okay, there's one bug per leaf, well, that's not, you know, that's, that's fine. That, that bug isn't going to, you know, isn't going to hurt my crop. They can be there. However, if there's 50 bugs per leaf, I know, um, and science tells us and, and, um, and the like that so my economic threshold might be 40 we could that plant can handle 40 bugs per leaf before They kill the plant and so if I see 50 bugs per leaf I know that that is beyond my economic threshold. So I need to, to Deal with that. So then we 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 have a, a decision tree it's Like okay, we've identified we have a problem now. What do we do? We need to we need to we need to solve it well, the way the founding principle of IPM is, is that we have, um, we start with the least environmentally hazardous or environmentally impactful solution first. So we might start out with biological control, which might be natural enemies. So these are parasites, predators, pathogens, or competitors. So let's just say I have aphids on my rose, rose bush. Well, I might put out ladybugs. Because you know what? Ladybugs are great predators of aphids, and that might solve my problem. Then there's cultural control. Cultural control might be things like if I have powdery mildew and wine grapes, I might um, remove leaves from the canopy to encourage airflow in the canopy because mildew really likes, you know, closed canopy. Um, if I can open the canopy up, allow more airflow, mildew isn't going to grow there. Just like that. There's mechanical or physical control, so that's directly killing a pet. Or blocking them out or making the environmental you know unsuitable for growth so like using you know bird netting or gopher traps instead of gopher poison or weed barrier cloth and then there's chemical control which is going to be the use of, of pesticides um, only when needed and if you notice chemical control is usually is our last um, is our last kind of line of defense we're assessing and using everything ahead of that um, and evaluating those pieces before we, we, we make a pesticide decision. So again, an IPM program, if we, we need to do is we need to evaluate the pest and the environment. We select the control measure that has the least environmental impact. And then that process is designed to solve these pest problems while reducing pesticide use um, um, and minimizing risks in the environment. So, Back in '98, so '98 was when um, when IPM was was um, was invented. Um, there was a, there's a group of um, insecticides on the market 
um, that we had a real a real big problem with. Well, since 1998, we've reduced through the use of IPM. We've reduced the amount, and this is to 2009. This is actually by 2020. I want to say we're we're almost down to 80 percent. Um, we've reduced the use of those specific pesticides um, across California because we've identified other things um, that give us just as good of control as say these these you know these really nasty pesticides because back in the day back before in the you know in 98 and before then we really didn't have any you know any other option um you know the the research wasn't there and the knowledge wasn't there and the appreciation wasn't there but really um we really need to be able to use again pesticides are tools um but they're like the hammer in you know in, in the toolbox. We might need to use, you know, for most processes, we might need to use, you know, some, you know, and we do use a screwdriver to put a screw in, but at some point, if the screwdriver stops working, you got to use, you know, you got to be able to use that hammer to get it in there. So really, um, that's a key component in sustainable um, farming, as well as in, um, certified organic they're just the especially in organic um, just the number of tools that we have in the toolbox is, is quite a bit more limited because we're, we're limited to organic organically registered um, pesticides however pesticides are pesticides um, and in fact there are some organic pesticides that are more you know quote unquote toxic than some of the what we would call conventional pesticides so having that understanding is, is really really um, key and I would be I'm, I've hit my time um so um that's my email address um and then certainly um beth has my contact information um and the like but i am always happy to talk about especially this subject um is you know pest management and ipm um as well as sustainable farming to, to anybody um i yeah i think it's a it's a it's very important to understand and um and it's a key component in in farming sustainably. We got to be able to control the pests and diseases that are out there, um, but in a in a way that that is has the least economic or environmental impact. So, thank you.